Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, sir, of the 2020 Podcast, LLC. Please say the LLC. And before you listen to this episode, I just got to let you know, I need you to stop what you're doing. Go to blkrenaissance.com, and I need you to shop for the culture. That's right. Anytime you use the promo code LLC20 at Black Renaissance Clothing's website, you will get 20% off your order. Off rip. No questions asked. So do me a favor and do it for the culture. Peace. Hey y'all, it's your girl Sade with Black on Black Rhyme. Step to the mic. Mic check. People always ask me where I get my confidence from. And I get it from inside. It's an inside thing, y'all. And when it comes to beautiful skin, I rock with Blendia by India. Where her motto is, be confident in your skin. She has a variety of naturally made soaps to keep you smelling good. Hair products for long, luscious, healthy hair. And even beer products for men. You know, we gotta keep those struggle beers away. So visit Visit BlendiaByIndia.com and use promo 2020skin to get 10% off your order. Thank you, Blendia by India, for being a sponsor of the 2020 Podcast LLC. Please say the LLC. Hey, this is Butter So Fly of Power Lines Poetry, here to let you know anytime I feel good, I have to look good, so you have to listen to me. Make sure you go to GuruDesigns.com, use a 3 instead of an E. The website is great, so you can get something for yourself. And then she makes custom clothes for men, too. And guess what? I got a promo code for you. Use 20 slash 20, and it'll get you 15% off of any order, $25 or more. You can't beat that. Go to gurudesigns.com. The self-destruct sequence has been activated. This sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed to the emergency car at the bottom platform. Mm-hmm. Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so no need to pick and choose. Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews. The hottest be coming through, dropping knowledge on all that you get up. We could the front of you with the truth that they offer you. Yeah, hands up, we do it for the culture. To give artists and businesses more exposure. Keep it real and stay solid just like a boulder. It's about to go all the way down, can get no lower. Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower. But if I stay running, I promise they're getting closer. More over success, my older. And if you're sleeping on me, I'm waking them up like vultures. I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll, where we'll be on the whole different vibe though we like to ride slow and keep our windows tinted so you really can see us like stevie wonder waking up with his eyes closed yeah got the kind of flow that rocked the boat on my 16s of pounds of dough and if you figure you can hang with me on the mic then grab some rope matter of fact better grab some hope while you at it we keep it live it's time to tune in turn up the sound on what you're using it goes so hard i think it's bruising the show is 2020 no need to zoom in yeah Because if you think about on Dexter, everybody was drooling over what's her um Didi. not Didi, the uh, mayor's um assistant, Miss Bellum. Oh, um, you never saw her face, but you saw her shape. Oh, Powerpuff, Girls. Powerpuff Girls. Oh shit, my bad. Yeah. Damn, I think it's all the same up. universe. Yeah. yeah, the way it's drawn. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, she was bad. That and Cow with Chicken. Super villain. Low Who? key, but that's yeah. another thing. I, think I she thought she was, she was uh him. That's Ooh. my theory. That's my, my thing. That is that is my. I've theory, always said it, it made sense to yeah. me. The the theme, the red, yeah, the way she's always able to report everything and get the girls out. I think yeah, him. I think it's him. Yeah, hers and him. But she's a he. <laughs> I met this lady in Hollywood. Hey. She had green hair, but damn, she looked good. What? I took her to my house because hey. she was hey. fine, uh-huh. but she whooped out a dick that was bigger than mine. What? <laughs> What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> you never heard that? Hell no. Oh, yeah, that's, shit, that's, 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 that's Afro music, Man. Yeah. yeah, that's Afro Man. Code 45. Oh, days. nigga. Yeah. yeah, you didn't know that. When I heard the song. 90. Damn. Yeah, we do. We the same age. 90. You just Damn. sitting up here rubbing your balls and shit. In I, your that's why I look back real quick. Hey, I'm sorry. I had it. <laughs> you just rubbing your balls in your <laughs> Daisy Dukes. rubbed his balls, bro. I just, just I, like, in my was chair. uncomfortable. My <laughs> <laughs> I was uncomfortable. I was trying to adjust it. Shit. I'm sorry. You could have stood up and jingle jangled. Go, go, ahead, go ahead and squirt some hand sanitizer. That man on is playing with Krampus in his shorts. Look on the other side of that record player, man. It's a <laughs> hand sanitizer. That sound like some old nigga shit I just said. Oh, oh, that was water bottle, girl. Yeah, hey, I want to let you know, man. You know, on some best friend shit. I'm going to smack your ass again, man. That was very, I enjoyed it. I mean, everybody at work, everybody 
I didn't think that it was gonna be so buoyant, man. I didn't think it was gonna clap back. I ain't know it. All these years. Power clap. It's a power clap. <laughs> do you do like, 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 uh, from an American dad, you do the little. <laughs> I'm glad you knew what the fuck I was talking about. I'm glad you knew <laughs> what I was talking about. Yes. No, I can't. Wallet, 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 world, wallet, wallet. That, that, first of all, that ass shaking was nigga. I sensational. didn't expect that, but when, when Toji did the handstand what? part, I was like, what in the fuck going on here? Yeah. Wally world, bro. I really watch American Dad to go to sleep. I do too. Yeah, Family Guy. That Family, family Guy, Rick and Morty. Solar yeah, those opposites. are the three to go to not Rick, yes. and Mo- not Rick and Morty. Soul Opposites. Soul I got to watch Rick really and Morty. Good. Well, I seen all really of good. the Rick and Morty, so it's like I'm waiting on a new season. Like, it's, it's it's out, new it's season out. Right, right? What? It's already out. It's right there. It's Look, it's my life been so occupied with this I medical understand. shit. Yeah, 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 I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And work you, and parenting and going to school. You're a full-time superhero, yeah. yo. Yeah. So. And we salute you, black woman. We salute you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Salute It's fun, though. It gives me a adrenaline rush. That's some shit white people say in their alarms. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. Sometimes when I go to work, <laughs> sometimes when I go to work, I just want to punch somebody in the motherfucking mouth just so I can start the day off. Like right. I feel like Zach Fox is square up his own. Yeah, um, square up. Right. You throw your hands. Like up. as soon as a patient get out of, I just I just want to smack him in the face with the clipboard. I don't need a gun. I don't need a knife, nigga. I will fuck you up with this clipboard yeah, by itself. Yeah. I Choke feeling, you with the blood pressure cuff, nigga. That's yeah. some John Wick shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I be feeling the same way that I come to work and I, I, I go to wherever they assign me to. And especially if I'm over there in 1200 and 1205 L Wedge, all them motherfuckers is certified dummies. They got licenses for idiocy. You fucking morons. And it's like they do shit to push the envelope on purpose. They want you to react. And so I just want to like, just have a fucking officer purge day where we could just oh beat mm. niggas asses sky free. We just come up in that bitch like, hey man, go ahead, lock down. But I ain't going. <laughs> 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 just start saying ten, ten ass like, okay, so we're gonna have a good day today, right? Yeah. <laughs> you ever seen this movie called The Raid? Yes. 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 We need that. Have you seen this movie called Mayhem? Mayhem, 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 mayhem. It was made in 2017. Mayhem, mayhem. Remind me. I can't think of the guy. What was the premise? Because I never know why. Okay, so it was basically based on um, top lawyer. Got a great job, but the job ended up firing him for something that he had no control over. And it was a bacteria that, or virus that somehow got into their building and what it does it causes you to have impulses whatever your impulse is at that moment like say if you got depression and you just got fired by your boss Mm -hmm. and you want to punch that nigga in the face that's your impulse and so what they kept fucking with that eye and everybody had like the blood vessel Mm. then pop so not everybody's fucking freaking out and going crazy up in there. They're like fighting, fucking, killing. Yeah, it's on um. It's on Netflix. Prime. It's on Prime. I gotta watch it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check this out. Report my, back to you. Yeah. Lead, the lead actor is this Asian guy. You probably know him when you see him. I can't think of his name, but the lead female is the girl from Ready or Not. Have you seen that? Oh, the wife. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So she's like partnering Ready up or with not him. Is really good too. It really is. It, really I was good. not. It was funny to me. It was them niggas died hilariously. It, oh my God. You, you seen Ready or Not? Um, You'd enjoy it. You're you cynical. will. You'd enjoy it. Yeah, okay. You'd All enjoy right. it. Shit. When I get home, I'll do that. I don't understand how in the fuck that is a family ritual. Right. Every time. Like how do you like get, we get together for this? How do you like fall in love? Like in that family, like the gr- the other girl survived. Right, she made it. She made it. One of the why wi- the cousin's wife, and they got kids together and everything. But it's just a simple fact. That's what you got to do to be you in you the family. Make it tonight. You make Loud it. noises. <laughs> bears smell. Period. Blood. You hear that? Period. Bears. Like, I love all of the like both movies. 
I feel like they could have did a TV show if they wanted to. Bro, they did a podcast, bro. Oh, I haven't work. listened to the podcast, but they do, they have a Ron Burgundy podcast. Oh, I need that in my life. Yeah, I need that, in my life. bro. You know what I need in my life? What's that? Thirteen Ghosts Netflix series, mm. <gasps> animated. Every about episode, each, about each one. Oh man, I saw the episodes are just. Rough. I got to get to the and long ass episodes. And I got to get to uh, was it the Juggernaut, the one that ripped? No, no, no. What's the big nigga? The Juggernaut. The oh, Juggernaut, juggernaut yeah. and Jackal. I definitely got to come for. Wait, are you talking about the big black nigga or? Yeah, the big black. The nigga. Hammer. The Hammer, because he had the nails in his ass. Yeah. John Henry twist. Yeah. 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 I want to know. I love movie. Thirteen Ghosts. Yeah, I, like I love that movie. And yeah, they did that. that, that they did sweet. that. Cause I love stuff like that, like American Horror Story and stuff like that. Have you seen the new one? I seen the stories. I know the yeah, the that's what season I'm... won't be released until the twenty eighth of this month. So they right now. They're so doing they're an doing anthology. stories. Yeah, it's an then... anthology. Like it's like you know, it's just like mini. Every episode is yeah. different. Every episode is a different little premise, you know, of its own. It's, it's yeah. Like, it's not like a season. Like, I only know, seen like the know. first story. To my murder house. The yeah, with oh, the girl. We were talking about the first season. No, no, no. The first, like the new story. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was still Lord. about the murder house though. The yeah, first yeah. That was a reference yeah. to season one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was murder house. Man, there's so many fucking souls that in that house. In that house, just yeah. I don't see how them niggas lonely. I don't see how he, <laughs> like, for real, mm-hmm. they be crying and shit, like, oh, I miss my baby. You got 42 other niggas around here you could party with. That, Fuck that, that baby. That, that's like, that's like that motherfucker jail, was gonna though. grow up to be a yeah. myth head like anyway. Jail, though. Like, you in jail with, like, hundreds of other motherfuckers. You don't want to be there with them. Well, yeah. I'd rather be at home than to be with these motherfuckers. I wanted to, see, the ones I wanted to see was the Coven one. I saw Coven. Coven is, Coven is arguably the best season by far that it's most- like coven then murder house then uh what's the other one um Ro- is Roanoke 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 is not my number one it's and my hotel one. hotel's my shit hotel yeah. is before Roanoke no Roanoke for me it starts with Roanoke then coven then hotel and then murder house uh Circus was pretty pretty fire. It was, it, it was okay. It was, it yeah. was a circus. slow burn. It was a slow burn because it was like it, it was like a lot of build up, and then once everything started happening, it happened all the fucking once. Yeah. So mm. so so I like that. And then the bear last one has to be season two, the asylum. Asylum was creepy. But no, it was fucking wacky. Well, the second to last one that they was doing the Trump shit, the supporter that had to oh, be the. Oh uh, no, Apocalypse is good. You know, oh yeah, Apocalypse. Apocalypse was yeah, good. I fuck with that. I it like tied, how, uh, yes. it tied in season one, the murder house together. When I seen season one, I knew that was gonna be something yeah. that collab. When he said, when she was talking about the dead and the living, mm. consummating and making a baby. Yeah. I was waiting on that shit. And they had that baby at the end. You remember that? And that baby grew up to be an angelic ass nigga. All yeah, right? That angelic, nigga was beautiful. Yeah, and the Christ. Yeah. He still was beautiful, though. He was a motherfucking psychopath. <laughs> he was. Man, bro. American Horror Story. <laughs> the only one I seen. Oh, oh, I forgot. My bad. My bad. I forgot to mention. 80s. Oh, the 80s one. The I, 80s did, one I didn't was even watch that one. Great. It, it was like. It was like Murder House, but like a Crystal Lake Murder House. I got like, you. It was fucking amazing. Look up the name of this goddamn I think it was called 1985. Or yeah. That, that season, I binged that season, and it felt like it was amazing. It wasn't creepy. It was just entertaining. Yeah. Roanoke was scary. It was legitimately creepy because of the origin. And like, and the it, crazy part, ain't there is a house in Roanoke? That yes, is, it yeah. is. Just like Hotel. Hotel, that season is based off the actual hotel. That's the real hotel. That the, exists. The, uh, wow. Your favorite serial killer. Ain't that his hotel? Uh, uh, my favorite H.H. Series- H. Holmes? No, that wasn't H.H. H. Holmes Hotel. No. Oh, damn. I thought that was based no, on it. No, that's, this, is, this hotel exists today. You can go to L.A. right now and go to this hotel. Yeah, I ain't trying to if I ain't going to come out. <laughs> <laughs> they done changed a lot of stuff about it but there's a documentary on Netflix about that hotel uh, the Night Stalker cult 
one. Cold, yeah, that's the one you was talking about. Yeah. Oh, no, it's just called 1984. 1984, yeah. 1984 was fucking entertaining. Members at a summer camp getting ready to reopen after massacre. Yes. Years prior. And the Night Stalker returns. Because the Night Stalker shows up in a hotel. Mm-hmm. In, a, in America, that season, the hotel season. And then the Night Stalker shows back up again. He somehow escapes the hotel. Nigga, and they got renewed for three more seasons. Yeah, because they're fucking amazing. God. Damn. American Horror Story is awesome. Okay, so check this out. American Horror Story was chosen over Lock and Key. Yeah. That was supposed to be in a thing where they was trying to debate who was going to come out first. And mm-hmm. I was rooting for Lock and Key, but Fuck then that. American Horror Story came yeah, out, and it, I was it, like... And you want to know that. what makes them even doper, though? What? They keep the same cast. They do. Oh, no, my God. They remix it. They remix it. When you can make a motherfucker into nine different motherfuckers, you are a good actor. This I knew I had bad taste in men when I seen Evan on Murder House. And he, he dressed up in that Diablo makeup, and he shot all them goddamn kids. Mm-hmm. You turned on, and I was slightly turned on. Not about the murder; it's just about his appearance. Mm, niggas, sad about the murder. <laughs> <Niggas>. <laughs> Let me. Um, you ever watch the show on Netflix called um, "The Haunting of Hill House"? Yes. So, I love that. I do too. Uh, have you seen "The Haunting of Hill House"? No. If you wow. like Lock and Key. See, but the thing is, though, I made a promise to myself. Because uh, I, I heard about Lock and Key in the comic book community first. Mm-hmm. And so when I saw it on Netflix, I was like, oh, fuck. Right. The fucking dweebs got to it first. Mm-hmm. You know, I hate it when, you know, you get adaptations of shit and motherfuckers don't appreciate it like Invincible. Like, I collected the entire series. I, I got it at the house right now before there was even, a you know, a, a adaptation on it on uh, Amazon Prime. And, and so when it came out and it was fucking amazing, I already knew everything was going to happen. I was just like fucking nerding. I was nerding, right. having a nerdgasm. Like, yeah. That's yeah. how I felt about Harry Potter when the movie first yeah, came yeah, out. I, I was like already on Order of Phoenix by then. I yeah, was like, I hell yeah, the nigga, books. I knew. I yeah, knew. you already read the book, so it's just like, you know, you feel like you're ahead of the game, so to speak. The only part that wasn't in the, it was a lot of couple, it was a couple of parts that weren't in the comic books, but one of the coolest parts about that series was the train. Have you seen mm-hmm. it? That train scene was not up in like, yeah. like, but I mean, he said he wrote that specifically for the show. Yes. Yo, that shit was not in the comic book and it was fucking amazing. I'm glad it happened because really it doesn't show in the comic books just how they devastated that town. It talk about the numbers. Like it was hundreds of thousands of people that died in the fallout between Invincible and his father, Omni-Man. Like, it, it, they just talked about it, but just to see it like that. I'm, I'm gonna give you some homework if you if you got some bonus time. Watch it again, but watch it on your phone. If you swipe left, they have trivia for every scene as to what had to do with the making of such, like just random ass trivia. They'd be like, "Oh, such and such was not created for this scene, but we wanted to swap it and put them in this scene." Ten seconds later, it's some more. Every episode got little tr- tidbits of trivia over on the side and you would never know if you on the just swipe hmm. over it's dope it's dope found it on accident was trying to get back to porn for a second <laughs> <laughs> found a little easter egg there. yeah 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 you know who did put me on uh lock and key my mom that's dope my mom's into she your mom's a nerd. Yeah, she is. You know uh, How's your brother doing? I haven't seen him in a long time. Nigga, he... Mm. He's he doing better? Mm. It's like... It's like kind of the same, but it ain't no coming back from that. His conversations then got worse with the voices and shit. And you can't even carry on a conversation with him. One, that nigga too deep in, the, in those 30 other conversations he's having. And then sometimes you hear your name. I'm like, hold on, wait, tell one on, keep keep my name out their mouth. I'm on your good side. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it is what it is. That's sad, man. That's really sad. And that's why I'm a, a big heart advocate for mental health. That's the reason why that. I chose my dad apply behavioral science. It's something I want to go go through with. Because, I mean, there's just not enough advocation for it. 
because there's not enough education about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so uh, people, you know, I know it's probably cliche by this point, but people, you know, they take their physical well-being, you know, seriously. But when you lose your mind, none of that shit fucking matters. Nope. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's crazy how like your mind can go and your body will fall a result of it. Like you literally seen people die from a lack of will, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Like imagine grief. Like like think about grief for one. Grief is an ailment that manifests physically purely off the psychological. Like the the thought that you something you held close and dear is gone and it's a physical response yeah. to something so emotional yeah like that's that's crazy and the fact that it can kill you it can mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's it's i mean that's who we are you know mind body and spirit big connected. three big three the big three no one knows how much of a hassle it is to have mental health and wake up with it every day it's like a battle every mm-hmm. day just to smile yep just to put on a smile and then the crazy part is it's like i use my shit to make people laugh i make fun of my own trauma mm-hmm. just like what happened in this apartment complex that shit molded me i mean i would never want to be in that situation again but it also taught me, you know, basically watch out. You never know what type of person you fucking with. And that's where the PTSD come from. And I told uh, a lot of people, they was like, you know, sometimes you seem violent. And I know I can be violent at times, but I got that put in my head. Like, I let my guard down for one nigga. And he fucked that up. So mm. I feel like anybody that feels like they want to just make a sudden movement or talk to me inappropriately, talk to me the wrong type of way, I, I get in defense mode. And I automatically, I'm I'm ready to boot up because now I feel like now you want to fight me. Right. Because of what I've been through in that situation. Nigga, I couldn't have cooked something right and next thing you know, boom, we fighting. Like simple shit. Simple. I could say, hey, I'm finna cook. And then I changed my mind. I'm like, hey, well, I'm finna go get get us some Chinese. What you want? You ain't finna cook for your man? Mm. Uh, well, I mean, I'm still getting you something to eat. You know, we still eating. It's not like we're not eating at all. I just maybe not, don't feel good or something. But at that time, my homegirls invited me out for lunch. I ain't chill with the girls in a while. Let me go chill with the girls. I can bring us something to eat. We can smoke, chill, be merry. Nope, that was a fight. A whole fucking fight. That's crazy. Like, I knew after the lunch, I sat in my car as my, and I watched my homegirls drive off, and I was like, I know I'm finna get ready and fight. Damn. And all I did was put my hand in the ponytail. What the fuck, yo? And drove home and sat in the parking lot for a while. Because I know. It was finna go down as soon as I go through the door. She was crazy. How did you? I guess the question I'm gonna ask: How did you manage the day to day of that? Like, fuck walking on eggshells. That's stepping around a, a minefield, yo. Mm-hmm. Like, how how long? If you don't mind me asking, it was about a year, year and a half. Okay. How did you do that day to day? Um, it wasn't always day to day. It was, I don't know. And it's stupid to say it, but I love the fuck out of that man at the mm-hmm. time. I mean, I feel like this was the first man that uh, I moved in with. Mm-hmm. I shared the experience of getting my first car with, you know, and it was a lot of first time experience I didn't share with him. And he was the, at the time, the only one that, you know, took me serious and, he actually asked for my hand in marriage. Oh, wow. Yeah. <coughs> he asked my parents. My parents loved him. Nobody knew. I hid everything. Nobody knew, but probably his cousin. Shit. 
That scares me, man. Nobody knew. They had some figure that, like, they had some in the back of their head, like, something ain't right. Because mm-hmm. I'm used to going to see my folks every day. Right. And chilling with them. And it start being times where it weeks pass. I don't say nothing. You know, mm. I never pop up. I'm healing. Right. Basically. Physically, I'm healing from a fucking fight we just had. So, it was just like, it was just one of those situations. I was one of them girls, if a nigga ever put their hands on me. Mm-hmm. But when you're in that situation and you feel how you feel about that person, it's a whole, totally it's a totally different, different situation. Mm-hmm. And I can, I can hear somebody say, can't, ain't no love in the world, baby, till you go through it. You would never know. Right. And you would right. never know until you finally fucking fed up with that situation. And you know, at that moment, it's going to eat you alive. If you leave this person. I gave me goosebumps, yo. And it's it, and it's crazy because it happened like right there. Like I walked, I accidentally walked into that other breezeway, and I looked up and seen that apartment number, and I was like, it wasn't sixty four, it was seventy two. This is where all this shit happened. Walking up that same walkway. Did you feel okay? Like yeah, you? I was straight, but I, I thought about that time. Um, that night I was feeling pour hot grease on him. Oh shit! I got one of them spaghetti pots. Mm. And I had a gallon of cooking oil. Oh, fuck. My sphincter clutch, nigga. <laughs> and he was on the phone, kicking. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the phone, kicking and, and everything on the phone. I don't know who the fuck he was on the phone with, but uh, at that point, I lost it. I snapped. And um, he told we fought all day, and he told me, um, you need to go look at your car. Somebody wrote on your car. And I thought... He went out there and fucked up my car. And I was in weather like this, but it was still kind of raining and drizzling. And I'm trying to clean my car because somebody wrote all over my car. They were writing funny shit. It was like Suck a Dick Foundation. It was like Mighty Morphin Horror Ranger. No. It was, and come to find out, I kid you not, my best friends called me. And as soon as I was hearing that grease pop at the bottom of that pan, mm. and I was standing in the mirror in the bath, I will never forget, I was standing in the bathroom mirror just looking at myself and my phone rung. And I answered the phone. And they was like, so what you doing? I was like, nothing. Just waiting. Mm. And they said, um, how you like your uh, car? I said, what you mean? It was like that uh, nice artwork that's on your car. <laughs> We did it. And I said, so you mean to tell me y'all did that? Mm. And they was like, yeah. And at that time, me and my best friend had slight beef with each other because I'm nigga happy. I ain't even going to lie to you. I, I I love being underneath my nigga, but she also felt like I wasn't showing her enough attention as well, which at the time, nobody knew what I was going through. Right. So she... When she heard the tone in my voice, she snapped on me. I snapped on her, hung up the phone. But when everything boiled down to it, and I told her, I said, you just don't know how, you just say that man life that night. You did. You just say that man life. But even though I don't forget it, I forgave him. He just didn't forgive himself for a long time. He would apologize you know, and everything. And I said, and it was years past. I was like, baby, it's, it's fine. It's over with. It ain't nothing we can do now. Yeah. You got to forgive yourself. That shit hunting you. Yeah. All the horrible things you've done to me, I will never forget it. But we will never be. It will never be a us again. I could not, I have Ooh. kids now. I could not trust you around my children. Yeah. I feel like if I would have got back into a situation with him, I would have been one of the mothers that boyfriend killed their child. That's how my mm-hmm. mind was working. Because we was working on having children. And then come to find out six months after our breakup, I done got pregnant by somebody else. Oh, shit. Yeah. 
So I didn't want him to take no animosity mm-hmm. out on my kids or nothing like that. And you feel some type of way. I will fucking did. kill you. You fucking did. I about did. my children. Shit. I hate my kids. <laughs> but them my kids. Right. I got the right to hate them. Right. I birthed them. They they tiny little Hitlers. But <laughs> <laughs> you better not touch them. Right. But, I mean, I still check on them. Then that's crazy. And people like, you crazy as hell. I was like, nah. I mean, I still check on his well-being. I still, we Facebook friends and everything. I just don't say his name. To I don't want nobody to, you right. know, fuck with him or anything like that. Because the past is the past. I put myself through that situation as well. And I chose to be in that situation for a year. Right. So, I'm like, no, it, I'm not doing this shit to people personally attack him because I still love his family. His family still fuck with me. And they don't even know. They know. Oh, they know now? They know now. And even so, even when his mama was passing, I still showed up to the hospital. Even after all that. I still cared for I loved him. I'm not going to deny that. I loved the shit out that man. But... I kid you not, I felt like Will Smith when his dad ain't want him. Mm. When I finally moved out the apartment, told my mama what was going on, and the whole family came over here, packed up all my shit. Everything belonged to me because they helped bought it. My Mm. folks helped bought it because this was my first apartment. Oh, shit, yeah. The only thing that belonged to him was the dining room table. Sleep on that, nigga. But... (laughs) It was like after we had finally moved everything out and I was finna lock up the apartment and I just stood there and I just, I just bawled my fucking eyes out. Cause I just could not believe this. I was like, I can't believe this is happening to me. And after that, it was failed relationship at the failed relationship at the failed relationship. And I was like, Hey, I started getting a pattern with it. It is what it is. Where are you at now mentally? Uh, I'm not on the road where I kill somebody. Not right now. Well, that's good. Um, I'm just on the road where I feel like I'm a love sick in person. Like I, 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 I want love so bad. I want to be loved so bad that it'll kill me. And that's weird. Right, right. I see the look. No, <laughs> but I, I just don't. It's like I don't feel complete in my life without finding true love. Let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. And the more I ask this question, the more I get more white. And, and I'm glad to have two different people like this male, female, married, single. Mm-hmm. Like the different experiences overall. What's your definition of love? That's a good question. Cause how can you miss something if you can't name it? If you don't have a clear, it's more of the good times that I've collected in relationships. That's what I yearn for. I don't yearn for the bad. The shit that I I've been through, the put that put me in that trauma. That's not I love, can, baby. Exactly. But what I yearn for is what made me happy in that moment. Like we can have a great day, and I want all our days to be just like the rest of this day. But I know, in the back of my mind, I know we finna fight. Cause it's gonna it's something I'm not, and I and I sit up here and I try to perfect myself for them. Mm. in their own way in their image instead of in my own image and you accepting me my way i try to be that person they want me to be so i felt like if i be that then maybe they'll fall in love with me do you still deal with that now yeah sometimes okay sometimes not gonna lie about it um what makes you conform to someone else's idea it's this one individual that I want to be with. Um, but mm. I know with his lifestyle, 
it ain't gonna be no it ain't gonna be no Cinderella story at all. So let me ask you this: with you knowing that, mm-hmm. knowing that this is not the puzzle piece you're looking for, knowing time is finite, why not invest inward first? To develop that love within, because to find, and this is something I'm learning, Mm -hmm. the more you see the insecurities in yourself and you try to pursue it, you chase this idea of something that you're not having, it's the more you're going to be disappointed. Why not? And I know it's cliche, and we know old folks say it time and time again, quit looking for it, let it come to you. Mm -hmm. What they're saying is... Quit being so hell-bent on it. Not even that. Find what you feel you're lacking. Find why you feel you lacking that. And fix that. Mm-hmm. Because you don't need nobody to have experiences and be happy. Mm-hmm. I was talking to Lindrick. I was like, with the pandemic, I created a space in my apartment where everything I'm surrounded with, I love. There's comic books on the table. My paintings on the wall. I got LED lights. I listen to lo-fi music. I can have a good ass time in here. Now imagine if you felt that inside. I have, but it's always temporary. And it's temporary. Why? I can't answer that. I don't know. That's what I mean by you got to look in within and see why. And it, a lot of people like, you know, the only way you can heal, you know, you got to heal by yourself. This shit is hard. Okay. Oh, it, ain't easy it is hard as fuck. And it hurts. To, yes. Cause <laughs> it's like when you're alone, that's when my demons come out the oh, most. Yeah. This nigga taught me about meditation. Yeah. You, oh, yes. nigga, me and my demons will sit out oh, on the balcony and boy. smoke one and just man. be venting to each other. Like, bitch, you. Honestly, man, um, you know, it's something that me and my brother Ladarius talked about since we was kids. Uh, you know, it's, it's really about being honest with yourself. It's that truth you run away from. You got to run to it. The only way out is through. So mm-hmm. it's not the truth itself that we're afraid of. It's what it means if we accept it. Yeah. That's what we're afraid of. It's like, okay, if this is true. Then that means I need to do this, this, and this. And I'm not ready for that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, and that's the way, like, you, you got to kind of hold yourself accountable for your own freedom, for your own desires is up to you it really is you know what i mean it's not up to anyone else and the vision is clear you got all these other distractions and you're looking for you know uh what you see that you want and you see that you need it's not that you don't need it of course everyone needs love you deserve to be loved you know what i mean you're worth that you know but you don't you don't know what kind of love you need because you got all these distractions in front of you. Right. You need to put the device down. And I'm not talking about the phone or... No, I know. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You need to put down the things that you've been using to cope. The weed. (laughs) The weed. Most definitely. Yeah, the the, the things you do to escape from the the overwhelming truth, you know, we're broken. And that's okay. These are our pieces. We still got it all together it's not what we want it. It's not how we imagine it, but we have all our pieces. You know what I'm saying? It's our mess. So we have to learn to, to see what it is, love it, so we can properly introduce it to somebody else. And then they can show us how it's supposed to be loved. Like, this is what I got. This is who I am. Um, I love it. Do you love it? Yeah, I love it. Let me show you how I love it. It's kind of like when we had a conversation with the fupa. And mm-hmm. me skeeting on that list mode. Oh my god! You know what I'm saying like, like you know, Shit. she she got the mode, she got the fupa. I don't really like this. This is what I got. And then I come along, and I'm like, this is what you do with it, baby. <laughs> yeah. And I love it. But it's made for that. That's the that's the puzzle piece. That's that's the the the, the open space that's meant for someone else to feel. That's it. It's a part of yourself that you don't know. You I mean, you don't know how to recognize or to see the charm in. It's not meant for you to see the charm in it. It's meant for you to just accept. It's like, this is me. So that way, whenever you see someone love it, you know that it's love. I start, what I was thinking, 
and I noticed it's a pattern. Um, ever since I was in that domestic violence, that's what I crave. Trauma. That's the way to no. That's the way. No, I know that trauma. That's just you trying to get your get your power back. It's like being raped. Like if you ever been raped or molested before, and you end up living a hypersexual lifestyle. Yeah, it's your way of trying to reclaim that power because now every time you have sex, it's associated with the abuse. And so to dissociate it with the abuse, you try to associate it with something else. And that's why you become hypersexual. And when it comes to domestic violence, you associate affection to like he cares so much, you know what I mean, that he do anything, you know, what I mean? right. He do anything to me, for me, whatever. And, you know, that 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 experience with that kind of quote unquote love is is what you associate that with. But you got to dissociate yourself from that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's not that's not what love was. Right and now, it I just been cool. And then right. his behavior and how he, you know, was abusive with his affections had nothing to do with you. That was on him. Yeah, it sucks that that was your introduction to it, right. but it has nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? So you have to find you, make your own story, make your own mark, and follow that path. And it's one that hasn't been walking yet because it was meant for your feet. I can feel you on that. And you, you kind of, I feel like you uncovered some of the layers in conversation. And um, when you were mentioning how when someone approaches you a certain way, mm-hmm. you get defensive and like ready to fight. Mm-hmm. That's pulling from that. Mm-hmm. And even when you mentioned you like doming, like being over someone, mm-hmm. that's pulling from that. There's, there's like little effects of that that's seeped in deeper. You know what I'm saying? That you're associating with other things. And like he said, escapism is real. And a lot of people, you know, Cole said, uh, I know a better way, uh, you know, meditate, don't medicate. Mm -hmm. He's not necessarily dissing weed or anything like that. You can enjoy weed recreationally. If you want to burn one, just to burn one and and find something funny, do that. But don't do that because I'm in the mood. Don't Mm -hmm. do it because I'm in my thoughts. I'm alone. I don't want to think like this. Let me... Mm-hmm. No, I usually but, just do you know, do it after work. I don't necessarily mean get you, a bill. Just, <laughs> oh no, that's great. Like that, that sounds phenomenal. That. But it's it's I a like lot of things people right do. Right, just a bill in the in the blend, Especially and when I just it's be. Cold, cold. Ooh. What kind of bill? What, what's your taste? I'm more of a Mexican imported. Uh, I like my Corona. Coronas yeah. and Modelo's. What about you? But, Coronas, bro. I'm a Bud Light nigga, cuz. Shit, I'm Blue Moon out this motherfucker. Blue Moon. Blue Moon. Blue moon to the moon. Well, yeah. at least you didn't say White Claw. Oh, God. Or Keystone. Nah. I, nah, I fuck with... Um, I like Sweetwater. You better not say Key. I fuck with Sweetwater, too. I fuck with Sweetwater. I feel uh, like. That Michael Ultra... Michelob, yeah. Man, yeah that remind me of my grandmama, man. Every they time I see piss, one, like in a thick it was stream like too. I had the nah. the um the the flavored one, and I must admit that shit was smooth, nigga. Yeah, flavor? Flavor? yeah they got um. They sip on it, man. I seen mama. One is on uh, too key much, lime. And yeah, I know you talking. About, I know you talking about mama. I can't sip on mama. They got gold, and then they got one. I think maybe is a acai or raspberry flavor or some shit. But my cousin had bought it, and I had drunk one. I was just, my nerves was bad because I just did cardiac arrest on a two-year-old. Damn. And I just was like, mm-hmm, I need I need a drink in the blunt. and the... Yeah. Some cold, hard dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking about dick for a two-year-old. And look, I was mid, nah, I like. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was like, well, I, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. think, rethink about that.